number 311 earthly pleasures vainly call me but I would be like Jesus 311 let's all stand stand please Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year to everyone. Kindly be seated. It's a privilege for all of us to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. It's a new year. It's 2022 and God has been faithful. And so I want to welcome you into God's presence here this morning. I'm only a representative for God here this morning. I want to welcome you into his courts, into his courts with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. I want to welcome you this morning. We are happy to be alive 
we are happy to be in the presence of the Lord on this, the first Sabbath of 2022. And is it with great joy in my heart that I will welcome you into God's sanctuary this morning. 2021 has been a very challenging year. And here we are in 2022. But we are placing our lives into God's hands. And so I want to welcome you into his presence. And I want you to just feel comfortable knowing that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And so for those of you who are sitting right before me, a warm welcome to church this morning. And for those who are worshiping with us via the internet, I want to welcome you into God's presence this morning. And even as I welcome you, I just want you to bear in mind that God is faithful. And I just want to share with you a poem. As I welcome you, I want you to reflect on the words of this poem. When my heart is calm and placid, and my mind is in repose, I feel a certain gladness of an inner light that glows. I know no pain or sadness. I cast aside all fear. For God has whispered gently, let me your burden bear. My heart is like a knowing that I am not alone. And with God to guide me, the answer will be known. Now these are such reassuring words. Knowing that God is going to be there to guide us through this year is the most reassuring words I can share with you this morning as I welcome you into his presence. So may you enjoy the Sabbath and may you continue to trust God with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but acknowledge him so that he can direct your paths. Brother Macmillan, it's so good to see you in church this morning. I want to welcome you in an extra special way. You are the youngest babe among us and we are happy that you can be with us this morning to celebrate on the first Sabbath of the year. Welcome one, welcome all. Good morning everyone. Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year to all. Such a wonderful privilege to be in God's house this morning where we can worship and give thanks to him. At this time, I see Sister Brown has just joined us, and I will call on her right away to do the scripture reading, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. It's a little long, but bear with us. This is where we are going to focus today. And then I'll ask Sister Bullock to come up front, and we'll have the prayer right after. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. And happy new year to you. Our scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5. And we'll read from verse 1 to 12. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. 
Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are he when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his words. Shall we all stand as we have prayer? Father which art in heaven, we come in your presence this morning, dear Lord, with grateful hearts. We want to thank you for being so good to us. You have kept us through the six days of toil and labor. And here we are this morning to offer our sacrifice of praise. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for your leading hand during the year 2021. Father, through the challenges, we have seen you standing by our side. And this morning, Lord, we say thank you. We give you praise and thanks for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us from day to day. We recognize, Lord, that you are faithful. You have promised to be faithful. And we want to ask you, Lord, to help us as your children to make that promise to be faithful to you also. I want to pray for our Sabbath school this morning, dear Lord. We lift up everyone before you, every individual here this morning, every family represented, dear God, everyone who is online looking at our service, we want to lift them up before you, asking you, O oh God, that you will continue to help us that by your grace, we will be determined to live a life that is right and pleasing in your sight. So this morning, we present our service before you and we ask oh God that we will feel the presence of your Holy Spirit among us this morning we recognize Lord that we are weak and frail we cannot do anything of ourselves and so we humble ourselves before you this morning asking oh God that you will have mercy and compassion upon us and help us Lord that during this year Whatever re resolution we will make, we will make it there, Lord, to fix our eyes upon you so that at any moment we are taken from this life or at any moment you will usher in your coming, we will be found ready. Grant us a good day today in your sanctuary, we pray in Jesus' name. Happy Sabbath, church. Yes, so according to our scripture reading, Jesus takes a seat on the mountain to teach his disciples and listeners. The Sea of Galilee was in the background. The Lord's disciples were sitting in front of him anxiously waiting, and the curious crowd was also waiting for a great miracle. Jesus takes this opportunity to teach some important truths about how to be true disciples in this present world. These are not lessons to merely expose on righteousness but to give answers and practical application to everyday lives. Jesus begins. Blessed are the poor in spirit.
poor in spirit means to be humble. Humility is the realization that all your gifts and blessings comes from the grace of God. To have poverty of spirit means to be completely empty and open to the word of God. Humility brings openness and an inner peace. Blessed are they who mourn. If we are humble and appreciate that all our gifts and blessings comes from God, we grow in love and gratitude for Jesus Christ, our Savior. But this can only produce mourning and regret over our sins and the sins of the world. One also mourns for the suffering of others. Mourning is a, in this context is called a blessing because mourning our fallen nature creates in us a desire to improve ourselves and to do what is right. Blessed are the meek. A humble person becomes meek or becomes gentle and kind and exhibits a docility of spirit even in the face of adversity and hardship. A person that is meek is one that exhibits self-control. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. A continuous desire for justice and moral perfection will lead one to the fulfillment of that desire. That is a transition and conversion to holiness. This is true for all the virtues. If you hunger and thirst for temperance, you will head towards that goal you have in mind. For example, one must have the gift of fortitude so one may be courageous in seeking justice. Blessed are the merciful. Mercy is the loving disposition towards those who suffer distress. Love, compassion, and forgiveness towards one neighbor will bring peace in our relationships. As we are merciful to others, so our Heavenly Father will be merciful to us, and we will extend it to feeding the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, comfort the, un the imprisoned, and visit the sick. Blessed are the pure in heart. Exodus, John, and Timothy all say that no one can see God here on earth. But Jesus said, the pure in heart shall see God. To be pure in heart means to be free of all selfish intentions and self-seeking desires. What a beautiful goal, to see God in the end. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers not only live peaceful lives, but also try to bring peace and friendship to others and to preserve peace between God and man. A peacemaker is a man who brings peace to another. By imitating God's love of man, the peacemaker becomes children of God. And finally, blessed are they who are persecuted. Jesus said many times that those who follow him will be persecuted. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. John 15, 20. Stephen, Paul, Peter, and Paul, and nearly all of the apostles and many Christians in the Roman era suffer martyrdom. But the Lord promised those that suffer for his sake will be rewarded with the kingdom of heaven. So this morning, brethren, 
I ask that we all count ourselves among the blessed and let us all join together for this new year to be servants of God, to have willing minds so that we can all reap a wonderful harvest for Jesus when he comes. Thank you very much. We'll now have our lessons. Okay, we'll now listen to Sister Febs. Good morning, church. God's blessing and favor for 2022. Before we go into our lesson study this morning, we will invite Brother Jamal February to sing for us. Good morning, church. I hope you are blessed by this song. If the ship of your life is tossing on the sea of strife, you need someone. And if you feel so all alone And your house is not a home You need someone If it seems life isn't fair And there's no one left to share All those lonely days and nights and things just won't turn out right and you need someone to care and someone to just be there you need someone i give you jesus he's the peace that passes all understanding I give you Jesus he's the perfect love that casts it out all fair I give you Jesus he's the water that you drink and never thirst again I give you Jesus my friend I give you Jesus if the pressures all around keep your spirits to the ground you need someone and if your body is in pain and your health you can't regain you need someone And if the And when it seems that you have tried With all the strength you have inside All those seams that you have failed Remember on the cross he nailed All the bitterness and grief To give you peace and sweet relief you need someone I give you Jesus He's the peace that passes all understanding 
I give you Jesus. He's a perfect love that casts it out of fears. I give you Jesus. He's the water that you drink and never thirst again. I give you Jesus, my friend. I give you Jesus. Good morning, church. And I trust that we, I, I should say I, go say, I was about to say had a good week last week. But I trust that we had a good year last year. And I trust that even as we go through the rest of this year, that God will be with us. Grant us all the success that we are aiming for. Grant us whatever the desires of our hearts are, as long as it's in line with his will. I trust that today, even as we go through the word of God and we, 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 we learn more about him, about Jesus as, uh, uh, as our champion, our mediator, our high priest, that we will take time to ponder that it's not I, but God. It's God who is in charge. Happy New Year's everyone and I pray the blessings of the Lord upon us. Let us bow our heads to prayer. Heavenly Father we thank you today for being with us. Through trials, through temptation, through all the situation that we've gone through we are still here. We are still here in your house. We are still in our homes listening to your word. And even as your word will go through today, we pray that it will touch some heart, some soul. And that somebody, Lord, who have lingering doubts about you, those doubts will be cleared up. Somebody who is in the valley of decision and whether to accept you as a personal sage will reach out and see you as the one who is in charge of their lives. I pray that today, Lord, your blessings will rain down. And even as your spirit moves, be with myself even as we... I, I, I work as a vessel through which you will produce your word. Use me, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this quarter, we're looking at the book of Hebrews. The messages that we get out. Oh, Sister Batis asked me to make sure that everybody, everyone here has quarterlies. Has everyone been served? Oh, we have persons without. I see Sister Bullock, Brother Brown. Yeah, they're persons without quarterly. All right, Sister Baptiste will be sharing out the quarterly. Good. We're looking at the book of Hebrews, and we're looking at messages that come from Hebrew. And to this week's lesson, it's interesting, I must say, even as we go through um, how God has been taking care of our lives. Now, Jesus is our king. Do we accept that? God. Now, Israel wanted a king. You know, when, when they came out of Egypt uh, and the Lord appointed judges over them, they, they, they look out and they saw what was going on in the other kingdoms and they come to, to um, Samuel and they say, we want a king. Now, I want to ask the question here today. Saul was eventually appointed. Was Saul Israel's first king?
for a top say yes was Saul's Israel first king no now basically if you read uh, you know at that time you know what God God said to them don't worry Samuel they rejected me I put to you today that Israel first king and only king really was God Saul probably the first earthly king after the ch <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Thorpe says a trick question I ask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah. But God was for Israel's, actually Israel's first king. And when Saul, the people went and asked Saul for king, Saul actually tried to persuade them not to do that. Now tell me something. When Israel asked about, when the children of Israel asked for a king, what were the expectation of that king? What did they look for in that king? What were some of the things that the qualities that they looked for in that king? I think I have someone on the floor. He was answering. Israel, Israel's king. They expected it to be a strong. They wanted it to be a. They wanted to be a strong, a strong king, that so that they the king could protect them from enemies, and they were looking for a powerful king, with many servants and was very rich. That. Those were, some of the, those were two of the qualities they expected from their king. Amen. All right. <laughs> yes, we heard it that they wanted a strong king, one who will protect them from their enemies, and he must be rich and powerful. Y yes, Brother Morgan. <laughs> Initially, the Lord did not want Israel to choose a king because he was the one that was ruling over them. And Israel wanted to be like the other, in, other nations because all of them had kings. And they wanted someone to go and fight for them, to lead them to battle. That was why Israel fell into apostasy because they follow. As the king lead, the people follow. That was why Israel get in so many problems because the, all the kings, especially some of the last kings, were so horrible that the Israelites went into apostasy and in the slavery three times the Lord had to put them into slavery because of their apostasy and the king was the one the kings were the one who led them that and that was why the Lord was telling them don't be like the other nations as uh, young Michael said the one Israel should have a king that was good the only good king that Israel had, actually, I, I, I think it's about three kings. You had David, J Josiah, and another. And all of them, even all of them messed up. God was the one who was leading Israel. And when he told them, don't, when Samuel asked people, them, you, you are rejecting God as your king. God then never wanted that for the children of Israel. Yes, Brother Tom. Yes. I'm saying here that um, let us remember that before Israel asked of any king, God tell Abraham that his descendants will have king. So even before Abraham have any children, God already tell Abraham that his descendants will get king. So God have it there a long time. Good. So the plans were in place. Yeah. Another thing about God, God at all, we can put in place that um, Jesus was foretold from, from the time sin was committed to be the sacrifice for our sin. And God tends to always put things in place. So the situation is here that we need to realize that Yes, we had these earthly kings, and you would know that they all failed. The, most of them failed. 
And even if you look in the world, you may have a powerful president, a weak president. In, 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 this thing is still going on today. And the thing is that they come and they go. But the king of our lives is Jesus. He's our king. The Bible says that, that, that God said, sent his only begotten son. And what we need to understand too, eh? when God um, was telling Pharaoh to let his people go, how did he describe Israel when he sent Moses? He was tell, what did he say? As my firstborn. And you would realize that Jesus was also described there as the son of God, my only begotten son. Right? Israel was God's son. Okay? What we need to realize too, even today, we are all God's children. Now, he called us. Now, the thing about Israel and the kings when they were established and a covenant was made with them, they would have inherited so much, but it came with a condition. That condition was what? Obedience. They had to follow the will of God. And if you would have noticed, kings after kings, David in his imperfection still was known as a, as a man of God's heart. Solomon, you know, I, I was discussing with Sister February all this week, how can this man be known as the wisest man that ever lived when all the errors that you would have seen out there, you know, coming out from him. But Solomon, because of his misdeeds, he caused the kingdom of Israel to be Divide it. God said, look, I will wrestle it from you. But eventually he said, I will keep one tribe for David's sake. And it's through that, tra that tribe, and that's the power of it, that actually came full. God fulfilled what Brother Thorp actually was. You had all these people, and then you had Jesus coming through there. The Bible said, the scepter shall not depart from, from Judah. So, as uh, one, one of the things about, about Jesus as our king, he was also our mediator. Right? He was also was our mediator. He was there, you know, championing what was going on between God and his people. And his people. Now, <laughs> when Israel set out to choose a king, they wanted somebody to defend them and so on. They wanted a champion. Right? Choose the caption was Jesus as our champion. There's this lovely song. Um, he's the champion of love. Now, Israel in that case, at that time, as we said earlier, was looking for a person who was physically strong, well built, taller than everybody else. And probably in a case looking in their own interpretation, wiser than everybody else. Now, how can we, now, now we, we know that over the time, these men, a lot of them who were chosen as, as king, they were complete failures. They led the people downward. They led the people astray. Now, this caption here is saying, Jesus is our champion. Jesus is our champion. Now, how can we tie in that? Given that Jesus is our king, now it's saying he's our, he is our champion, but when I look at the other kings as they come down, I wouldn't want champions like them, most of them. Now, what's the difference with Jesus, with him being our champion? What's the difference with Jesus? Jesus protects us from sin and, and everything that the devil throws at us. And 
He will protect us from every harm in the world because he is strong. He is strong. And we should follow him day after day because he will protect us. Amen. <laughs> All right, brethren, I will continue. All right, now I've just been informed something that came up there that, wow, <laughs> I'm doing the wrong lesson. <laughs> yes, I'm doing the wrong lesson. I'm doing the first lesson in January. The first lesson, yeah, yeah, I'm doing the wrong lesson. Oh, pardon me for that. <laughs> right, but I'm on it, so I will... <laughs> I will continue it. Amen. <laughs> Good. Yes, Jesus is our champion. Because we may not feel, you know, he is our protector. Now listen. The thing about it, when we feel defeated, when we feel trodden on, when we feel that we are not getting anywhere, it's good to know that someone has conquered already for us. That is what, in my opinion, makes Jesus my champion. So when I am going through some financial difficulties and I'm wondering how I'm going to get through this, I know that I ha already have an overcomer who has overcome for me. That is what makes him uh, uh, my champion. Whenever there's a situation in your homes or maybe at your workplace and it looks like things may turn against you, it is good to note that you have a champion who is looking out for you. Amen? Jesus is our champion. Now it also said that Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our high priest. Now, I know there's a text, I think it's in Hebrew, so it said that he's our high priest who is touched with the feelings of our informity. Now, a study of the high priest in Israel and part of the lesson here, you had to compare them. I have to say because as I said, well, you had to compare the high priest in Israel, you know, the, the, that, what the children of Israel had to do with what Paul said about Jesus as, as the high priest. Now, one of the things that the priest back then would have done, he would have interceded on our behalf, on the people's behalf. They brought the, the sacrifice, a male um, animal, sacrificial animal, and he will take them into the temple and he would do the sacrifice on their behalf. Right? He will present this blood sacrifice and pray for the atonement of the people's sin. Now, how did that compare with Jesus being our high priest and these sacrifices and so on. What is happening now? Now, do you do, do we have to bring find um, go buy a sheep and wear it and make sure it's clean and bring it to church for sacrifice um, on the tenth day of the first month? Do we have to do that? No. Why we don't have to do that? Do we have to present it to Brother Marlon, the the, the first elder who will go and and, and do the ceremonial activities of it so that our sins <laughs> will be forgiven. Do we have to do that now? Why? It, it, those, okay. those were just pointing to the greater sacrifice that would have been about to come when Jesus was crucified on the cross, right? He paid the ultimate price for our sin. So we don't have to go that Way any longer. Amen. Amen, Brother Simpson. Yes, Brother Thomas. Yeah, um, we understand the concept of Jesus priest, but the role of the priest during the time of the Israelites um, had to do with um, being an intercessor between God and the people. When Jesus died and the moment of his death, one very significant thing happened. The veil between the holy and the unholy 
was ripped in two from top to bottom, which basically says that we don't need a priest anymore. How do you tie that into the, to this issue that Jesus is still a priest? All right. We are talking about the veil in the temple ripping. The role of the priest was to intercede between the people on the outside and God, who is in okay. the most holy. I get that. So, Art Michael, I'm not going to take this one from you. So, <laughs> sorry. So, what we're saying here, what, what Brother Laurel is trying to say, how do we tie this in? We know what the priest used to do. So, how do we bring it now that Jesus is our high priest? And the things that used to happen then do not have to happen anymore. Right? How did, how did, did, did you, you, you know those sacrifices? You had the, the, the seven ceremonial Sabbaths where people would argue about Sabbaths being nailed to the cross. And I would always tell them, yes, the Sabbaths were, na the Sabbaths were nailed to the cross. Those seven ceremonial Sabbaths at the beginning and ending of the three feasts and the day of atonement. They were nailed to the cross because what was significant in them? Sacrifices. Atonement for sin. You bring something to help you purge yourself. Yes, Brother Talk. So Paul encouraged his readers to stay strong in faith. We must have faith in Jesus. When times are hard, we must look only to Jesus. Jesus is at his temple in heaven right now. Yeah, he worked hard to save us. He answered our prayer and gave us the power over sin. So. But one of the part that puzzles me is when they say that Jesus is working hard in heaven. But what you, based on the question you ask, why how we tie them in? Even this week lesson mentioned that Jesus is in the temple in heaven working hard as a high priest for our life eternal. Also, one thought, teacher, is that when Christ died on that cross and he made the statement, it is finished, man's salvation was secured at that time. All he asks us to do, like the Israelite, is to be obedient to his laws. You can't save yourself, no one can save themselves. When Christ made a statement, it is finished, man's salvation was secured it, it had nothing else to do with us it was only because of Jesus Christ what he did secure man's salvation now all his acts and the same thing he was asking the Israelites I have given you my laws not to, not to save you but to be obedient because your king your provider will come one day and pay the price for man's salvation it didn't happen till after 4,000 years. But God expects his people to be obedient to his laws. Not to be saved, but as you are saved. And then, because Christ now, in a statement from Sister White said, if, you, if Christ don't represent you in heaven, you have no chance. Amen. Yes, Sister Talk. Sister Talk. Yes, something I can't understand, right? If a person, you give your life to Christ and they're backslidden, right? And after you're backslidden, you pray to Jesus. You know that Jesus will forgive you for your sins, right? So why we are seven Adventists? If a person backslidden, they come back to church, they have to be baptized again. <laughs> All right, the question Sister Torp is asking, um... Why we baptize? You already went through the baptism once. You've given your life to Christ. Why, if you backslide 
and you went into the world, you commit adultery, you, you, you steal, you, you kill somebody, and so on, and you decide to come back to church, and why rebaptize? Why do you have to go through that process? Go on. All right. Now, Sister Top, let me just deal with. <laughs> let me just deal with the issue here of um, of the priest, the high priest. Okay. Now, Jesus at times uh, is recognized as the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. Now Jesus, he, he came and he was actually prophesied to come. When he came, what did he go through? Everything possible that that lamb would have gone through. The blood sacrifice was made on the cross of Calvary. As a result of that sacrifice, we don't need to bring a lamb. Because we have the lamb of God. We don't need to have someone interceding on our behalf. As in some churches where you have to go and confess sin to a man, a father, or somebody. We confess our sin directly to Jesus. And he is able to take care of our sin. Now, Sister Torp, in relation to the baptism and the, 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 the re-baptism, I know in some, in some cases it can be a technical something. My... my, my take on this is that baptism as we say it's a symbolic something it's outward to show an inward commitment it's an outward show of an inward commitment now I strayed from God and I went away from God so I decided to return I want to tell everyone I am back with Christ so this is what I do that outward um Activity to show my inward commitment. Yes, but well, just, um, well, if, I, if I may add to this, <clears throat> in a marriage situation, and we have to look at the fact that the church is actually in a marriage relationship with Jesus. I'm married, and my wife walks away from the relationship. She basically abandoned me, and she went and she committed adultery, and she stole, and she did a whole bunch of stuff. What eventually happens is that I will probably divorce her. If we decide to recommit ourselves to each other, there has to be the process of remarrying. To a lot of people, it's a little difficult to understand. Why do I need to get rebaptized? But if I want to go back to a relationship with my wife that has walked away and that I divorced, I need to get married. When I get remarried, I make a public again, another public commitment to this woman that I'm remarrying you and I'm sticking with this marriage with you. Amen. Let me take Brother Nolly and then we shall go into wrapping up. You made a statement that's very significant. You said everything that happened to the Lamb happened to Christ, but you mentioned the blood. And you didn't go into the others. The blood was shed, the Lamb was killed, and Jesus was killed. But every time a Lamb is brought for sacrifice, the lamb also has to be washed. So if I'm, so I'm trying to answer Sister Top's point through the sanctuary services. So the lamb was washed. Now if I walk away seriously as an Israelite, join the Moabites, turn my back on Israel completely, when I want to come back to God, I have to bring a, a lamb. And what has to happen to the lamb again? It has to be washed. So if you walk away in a big way from following Christ, you have to point back to the sanctuary service and you also have to be washed again. That's the sanctuary basis for rebaptism. What Laurel answered is also logical and what happened. Right. I will take what the top of our final Let me just say one thing. Um, based on what I learned from the Spirit of Prophecy is book with the Bible together. It, because I explained the Bible for me. It says, if a person 
accept Christ and you baptize and accept Christ your name is in the Lamb's book of life if you have never accept Christ at all you're born into this world your name have never registered in the Lamb's book of life if you dare you sin you go back to Christ and you ask for forgiveness God will forgive you if you refuse to ask for forgiveness and the day of the final atonement as used to happen on earth and the day of atonement and your sins is unconfessed I'm talking about the last one going on up now God will remove our name from the Lamb's book of life so um, brother Thomas speak about married and divorce if a man leave um, what is divorce if a man leave his wife and he gone and dwell with four other lady or five does it mean that he divorces his wife that does mean he divorces his wife he had to get a document a legal document so um, what is backsliding if I go and I cut a bunch of banana for a man which is sin. That doesn't mean I backslide. So if I want to come back to Christ, I have to act, I have to go baptize again because I cut a bunch of banana. I steal a bunch of banana from a man. Let us meditate upon this. Yeah, as I said, yeah, we, we need to wrap up here. As I said, it's a <laughs> it's a ticklish technical issue, one of the issues that will always seem. But as I said, my take on it, it's a public show. It's a public show of an inward commitment. So if I stray away, and I especially stray away in a major way to the extent where there is a divorce, then I have to remarry. Amen? Now, I trust that as we go through the remainder of this week, even as we did the lesson for <laughs> this week coming, that we will see Jesus for what he is our king our champion our mediator our high priest and we will see the need to put our lives in his hand and we will allow him to continue to lead out in our lives I pray that God would bless us as we go through the remainder of this Thank you, Brother February. A very interesting lesson for the discussion. And I trust that as we go through the book of Hebrews, we would find a lot there for us to learn about, to think about, and to most of all, to know that Jesus is our mediator. Um, we'll decide that afterwards. Brother Laurel is asking which lesson we're doing next week. <laughs> So it seems like we covered lesson one and two this morning. <laughs> All right, never mind. Uh, excuse me a minute. Welcome, Pastor Brent and family. Happy to have you with us today. And for all those who came in late after the welcome, so happy to have each and every one worshiping together today on this the very first Sabbath of the new year. At this time, I really would like to express my sincere appreciation and thanks to all the Sabbath school officers who took part in Sabbath school during 2021, especially the Sabbath school superintendents. I believe we are all familiar with them and they were all here this morning taking part as, with the exception of Sister Raffaella and Sister Archibald. And uh, they are the ones together with Sister February who would be serving in the Sabbath school for 2022. I, Sincerely ask that each and every one of us would continue to cooperate with the Sabbath school officers and be a part of Sabbath school. Even if you are not asked to do something and you feel inclined to do it, maybe to sing a song, maybe to give a testimony or to do a scripture reading, something that you would, don't shy away. Don't sit back and say, well, they didn't ask me. Volunteer to do it and it will make our Sabbath school so much more interesting 
and alive. So please, everyone, let's be part of our Sabbath school in 2022. I express my thanks and uh, hope that we will continue to remain faithful and true to the Lord. And as I leave this morning, I want to leave this wish for each and every one of us. I believe some of us would have seen this already, but I just want to go over it just in case there are some of us who did not see it. 12 months of happiness, 52 weeks of fun and laughter, 365 days of success, 8,760 hours of good health, and I know that we all want this so much. 525,600 minutes of blessing, 31,536,000 seconds of joy. I wish this for each and every one of us this morning, and let us all have a blessed and prosperous and healthy new year. Thanks to everyone. Good morning, everyone, again. Happy Sabbath, Happy New Year. Just a reminder, last week, we passed out some lessons to each and every one of us. I hope that everyone got one. I think I gave two lessons to most individuals. Those lessons are not supposed to be sitting in your home. And they're not for you to do. You could do them, but don't fill them in. The purpose of these lessons is evangelistic in nature. I want to encourage every one of us, those who haven't gotten any, see me, not today. I'm still waiting to get the, some additional ones. It's an evangelistic drive to get lessons into the hands of individuals. There are nine lessons. And over the next few weeks, we're asking each and every one of you to get involved in evangelism. Remember what we talked about, TMI, Total Member Involvement. We want to ask every individual in this church to target specific individuals. There must be a family member, a friend that you want to save in the kingdom of God. Lift them up every single time you pray and ask God to touch their hearts. There are members that you know who have left the fall. Let's pray them back into the church. There are individuals that you want to see saved. Pray them into the church, but do your part. Get the lessons into their hands and make sure that they get an accurate access to the lessons to make sure that they have a foot in the kingdom of God. One of the reasons I get involved is because I don't want to hear that somebody got left out because I didn't do my part. Somebody might watch you one of these days and say to you, if you had done your part, I would have gotten into heaven. Let's make sure we do a part. Let's get involved. And as we step into this new year, facing the break the evangelic glass ceiling, let's get involved. Next week, Next week, Saturday, we start a Holy Spirit week. Let's not make it something as a revival and reformation for college church, but bring somebody to church with you or invite somebody to, to view the link. Let somebody know that you're stressing the emphasis, the emphasis on the Holy Spirit, and we want to see somebody saving the kingdom of God. I believe that our first has set a goal for this church. Let's go beyond what we've set in, and let's make sure that somebody gets baptized from this week that's coming ahead and make sure you make an effort to get recommitted to God's work. Happy Sabbath to all and a happy new year to all. And as, as Elder Thomas Rudy said, we begin our Holy Spirit week next Sabbath with Pastor Rico Nevinson. It will be live right here from Kaula SDA Church. I'm inviting everyone to be here present and for those who will not be able to make it, you can view it online from Sabbath coming. Our AY this afternoon begins at 4.30 in the p.m. And we ask to kindly read Genesis 6 to 9 for our program this afternoon. Genesis 6 to 9 for our program. Our church board meeting will be held on Tuesday, 
Tuesday, the 4th of January. Tuesday, the 4th of January. Now, on Friday evening, January 7th, at 7 p.m., we want to invite you to tune in to live on Facebook and YouTube as we celebrate with our young musician, Calville. He'll be celebrating his birthday, and he'll be doing it live with a concert, a gospel concert. So we invite you to tune in on January 7th, and we want to extend happy birthday in advance to Colville as he celebrates his birthday. We'll send the link for you in the chat, and you'll see it on social media also. Have a blessed Sabbath, everyone. I invite the praise team to join me. And you've been seated for a while. I invite you to stand as we sing this lovely song, number 470. Let's stand. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than love in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light. Blessed sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows. In my soul today, a carol to my King, and Jesus is the you can hear, the song I cannot sing. Oh, the sun will shine, bless the sun when the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows his of adoration. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Number one. All right, so I want to welcome those who were not here from the beginning. Happy New Year to you and God's continued blessings upon your life. So wonderful that you're worshiping with us at the beginning of the new year. Join us as we give God praises. Praise to the
that beautiful singing. close heavenly father we are grateful to be in your house today we are grateful to see another year we are grateful because you are still God and Lord as we gather in your house we ask for your presence to envelop this place may heaven come down and glory fill our souls inhabit the praises of your people and may we leave your courts rejoicing thank you once again for your presence and thank you for accepting our worship. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I want to take the opportunity to welcome you to the Call of Seventh Adventist Church for the first service on this the Blessed Sabbath. 2022. Whether you are watching online or you are here with us in person, we want to let you know that you are valuable to us. While we have gone through some trying and difficult times as a church, as a nation, and yes, as even as the world, we can rest assured that God still has the whole world in his hands. I want to take the opportunity to wish every one of you God's richest blessing for 2022. With us today we have Mrs. Thomas worshipping and her grandson worshipping with us today. We are happy to have you at church today worshipping with us. We have in our midst also our dear pastor and family, Pastor Brent St. John. Welcome in a special way. And to all our regular members, some who we haven't seen for a while, some who we have seen now and again, Brother Macmillan, welcome in a special way. And may God continue to richly bless all of us as we worship today in truth. We want to invite our ushers to take their places at this time. I find myself going through the book of Malachi recently. Third or fourth time I read into the Bible. And I found Malachi, the book of Malachi, very fascinating. There's a particular text in the Bible in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, I think it says, that if you don't return your tithes and offering, you're stealing. But I believe sometimes we beat up on individuals who don't return the tithes and offering because not they're stealing, because there's a lack of faith. So during this year 2022, I want to challenge this church. I want to challenge this church. Prove God. My father used to like to say, when you go to give God with a spoon, he gives back with a shovel. Let's advance it. When you put a shovel, God throw back at you with a backhoe. So this year, I want to challenge this church. That we be faithful in everything we do, faithful in our lives, faithful to our talents, faithful to our time, faithful to our tithes and offering. The Bible says that your offering is a reflection of how you believe God has blessed you. So this morning, let's be collecting tithes and offering. And during this next year, let's return a faithful tithe, a faithful offering, and faithfulness in everything we do for God as He has blessed us. Let's bow our heads for prayer. 
as we ask God's blessing. Thank you, Father, for this new year. We know, Father, 2021 was a challenge. But we're now looking back at the uh, challenge we met. We're going to be looking forward at the blessings that you're going to give us in 2022. And as you bless us, dear God, we covenant in our hearts that we ret return to you your part, what belongs to you. And we're going to return something faithful with a cheerful heart because you've blessed us so well. Whatever is collected this morning, dear God, I pray a blessing upon it. Those who don't have to give, bless them nevertheless and help them, dear God, to get to the point where they can return to you something. I pray, dear God, that you continue to lead out in everything we do and say. Is my prayer with thanksgiving in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. meditate on our prayer song in preparation for our prayer. Father, this morning we want to thank you so much for your grace and your mercy that has kept us and brought us through 2021. We are now in the first Sabbath of the new year, 2022. We want to give you all the praise and thanks and glory that belong it 
only to you. As we look back at 2021, there were times, dear Father, that we became discouraged. There were times that we become perplexed. There were situation and experience happening that could have made us become discouraged. But through it all, you have extended your grace unto us. And this morning, we want to say thank you for being with us and for taking us thus far. Father, we don't know what the future holds, but we are happy that we know a man who holds the future. And so, dear Father, this morning we commit our lives into your hands. Situation and things that is happening around us can lead us to become discouraged, but help us to make you our refuge, our hiding place, dear Father. When we make you our refuge, you promise that when we go through trials, oh God, you promise to be there with us. When the noise some pestilence come around, you promise to protect us. And you can only do these things for us when we put our trust in you. So help us to develop that relationship with you so that when circumstances seem like it want to beat us down, we know in whom we can trust and we know in whom we can go to, dear Father. For you promise to strengthen us where we are weak and help us, oh God, to study our words daily. As we look around, it seems like we are going through sifting and shaking times, dear Father. But help us to develop that relationship with you. So come what may, we will stand firm, dear Father. Help us to look to you, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We recognize that we cannot do anything in our own strength, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, dear Father, so that we go on, on this Christian journey, we will continue to have a song in our hearts. Dear Father, we do not know, as I said before, what the future holds, but we know that you hold the future. So you, may you protect us from harm and danger. And may you give us the wisdom and understanding to deal with circumstances and situations that may arise as we go throughout the new year. We put everything before you. We put place our lives and every situation that we may encounter in your hands this morning. I pray, dear Father, that you will keep us safe we with our families. Oh, God. Bless our children, bless our brothers and our sisters, mummies, daddies, cousins, friends. Cover them underneath your blood as we go throughout the year, dear Father. Sometimes things happen in split seconds. So help us, dear Father, not to neglect each day a relationship with you. Continue to cover us underneath your blood. Break those who are listening to us via the internet. Protect them, dear Father. Meet their needs accordingly at this present moment. Bless our shut-ins who are listening to us. Continue to strengthen their faith and buoy up their spirit this morning. Many may be suffering from aches and pains, but help them to know, God, that you can take away whatever aches and pains they may have, and you have the strength to give them, oh God, to overcome or to go through for those who are in aches and pain at this moment. So continue to bless and guide and direct our path as we put our trust and our lives in your hands. In Jesus' name I pray thanksgiving. Amen. Sing, I am a promise, I am a possibility. to be 
one more time. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. Good morning, our boys and girls. Good morning to our bigger boys and girls. Our story for today is entitled The Sad Peacock. The Sad Peacock. So I'm waiting for the children to settle down so that we can have this story. All right. Now, many times as children, when you have brothers and sisters, I know sometimes one person would be asked to do something or one person have something and the other one would say, why can't I have one too? Or why? It always happens between Juma and Juma. Why Janiah and not me? All right? So this story is to help us today to understand why. The sad peacock. Now, once upon a time, there was a beautiful peacock who was very proud of himself. And if you know a peacock, a peacock, when it opens its feather, it is very beautiful. He is always admiring himself and his beautiful colors. But he hated one thing about himself. He hated his voice. His voice was rough, and it reminded him every time of his shortcomings. And it took away all his joy. Suddenly, one day, he heard a nightingale, and this nightingale was singing nearby. And as he listens, listened to the nightingale's sweet voice, he was once again very sad about his own rough voice. He began to wonder, why couldn't I have such a beautiful voice? At that moment, his friend Juno, the parrot, passed by and asked him, why are you upset? And the peacock complained about his rough voice and how he was sad because of it and the fact that the nightingale had such a beautiful voice and he wondered why his voice was not as beautiful. Then the parrot reminded him something. And I want you to listen to this. It says, after listening to his friend, the junior the parrot replied, every living being is special in his or her own way. They are made in a certain manner that serves a greater purpose. Yes, the nightingale is blessed with a beautiful voice, but you are also blessed with beautiful and glittering feathers. The trick is acceptance and making the most of what you have. The pickup then understood how silly he had been for comparing himself with others and forgetting his own blessing. He realized that day that everyone is unique in some way or the other. And he was reminded with Psalms 139 and verse 14. And this is the part that I want you to remember. It says, I am wonderfully and fearfully made. And each of you are wonderfully and fearfully made. So it is not important to compare yourself with others and what they have. What you need to do is to remember what you have. So the moral of the story is acceptance. Acceptance is the first step in happiness. Make the best of what you have rather than being unhappy about what you don't have. Amen? So, somebody would like to pray for us? Come, Jamal. 
and Michael. Michael, come. So we'll have two prayers today. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. Help us to be good boys and girls. Bless mommies and daddies and all the teachers. Bless everyone. Bless. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Jesus, help us as we go through this Sabbath. Help us through the first day of this new year and the first Sabbath of this new year. Help everyone to learn that as we have faced good and bad moments from the year 2021, that we will be happy for all we have. That as we learn, that as we learn from our past mistakes, that we will not make them again. Help us to be smarter. Help us to learn from the year 2021. And I know we've had many bad moments, like the volcano, the volcano eruption, COVID-19, uh, but we should be happy and thankful for to all of the situations that we go through because, hey, we, we could have been the one suffering those things. But we thank God because he has kept us through this year, through, through, through the year, through True 2021, help us as we enter the new year 2022 that we will, will that we will be full of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Juma. Thank you, Michael. Taken from Joshua 4, 1 to 7. Joshua 4, 1 to 7. And it came to pass when all the people were clean, passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe, a man. And command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest feet stood from twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the log logging place, where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out every, every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulders, according unto the number of the tribes of children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant, covenant of the Lord, when he passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. End of scripture reading. Good morning, everyone. Today I've been given the privilege to introduce our speaker. Today's speaker is no stranger to us. He lives right in our backyard, so I think we can say his membership belongs in Calder. 
So I speak of no other than Pastor Brent St. John. And I'm sure many of us know who he is, but for the benefit of those who may not know, he is Dominican by birth and Vincentian by marriage and heart. He is the husband to Anya St. John for the last 13 years. And the father to a joyful four-year-old Brianna, and they're both sitting right here. He currently serves the SVG mission as the youth and health director and also assistant to the president for evangelism. He has been in ministry serving the Lord for the past 14 years and continues to do so. We welcome him and pray, that, pray for continued blessings to his family and his ministry. But before Pastor Brent comes to minister to us, we will join our praise team in singing praises to God. This morning, can anyone say that is only because of Christ's strength that you made it through the year? Can I see your hands? Yes. And this morning, we want to praise him because he is the only one that we can truly put our hope and our faith in as we, as we begin 2022. So let us sing number 522. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Number 522. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, no other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Darkness seems to fill in space. I rest on his own changing grace. In every high and stormy gale, my hand goes within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground. is found.
in your hands in your hands we bid you take over our lives Lord our dreams aspirations all our best Jesus Lord our hopes our fears in your hands that stand Take over, Lord, 
trust in. So Lord, we are trusting everything to your hands. And then we keep praying for this land. Lord, to labor with others for the best. Jesus, Lord. Lord, we place today, tomorrow in your hands. Lord, we surrender. We surrender all. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy New Year, brethren. No, I don't believe you. I don't, I don't think you are, you, are, you are happy to see a new year. I said, Happy New Year, brethren. Has God been good to you? Has God been good to you? If God has been good to you, say amen, man. Say amen, say amen. If God has been good to you, give him some praise this morning. God is amazing. God is wonderful. I am just happy to see 2022. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about you. Those who are not happy, then, then it's you. You can keep your sadness to yourself. But this, I'm just happy. Of all years, I've been happy to see. I don't think I've been happier to see 2022. Because I didn't think I would have made it through 2021. <laughs> Honestly, honestly, when I saw yesterday came, and when I saw the sun set yesterday, I said, yes, Lord. I made it. <laughs> I said, yes, Lord. I made it. It has been, uh, I, those of you had a rough 2021, a rough 2021, I'm not, just, just wave your hands. If you had a rough 2021, just, pray, just wave your hands. Mm -mm, look at, look at hands. No, put your hands again. Yeah, I didn't believe you. Let me go ahead. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. We're going to do it again. We're going to do, do it again. We're going to do it again. All those who had a rough 2021, wave your hands. I tell you, I tell you, 2021 was rough. 2021 was ruthless. <laughs> I, I, I remember 2020, you know, when we, were, when we were at the end of 2020, people say, yes, we made it. 2021 going to be the year <laughs> where we're going to take our life back <laughs> and things are going to go good. Musicians, don't go too far, don't go too far, don't go too far. I know you want to sit down comfortably, but don't go too far. I'm coming to you just now. So, Ellen, Brother Nolly, I've given you two minutes. So I need you just now, just now. I'm going to come to you just now. No, no, no. no. I, I, I remember... People said new frontiers, new plan, bigger things for 2021. And 2021 just came on the scene and said, if you all you think 2020 was bad, let me show all you what a bad year looks like. <laughs> and I, I, I'm frightened for 2022 because I don't want 2022 to try to outdo 2021 at all. <laughs> but, but 2021 showed us that boy, just when you think you have seen it all, you see, you see things that you never thought you would have seen before. We started the year with Corona, you know. So, well, we had it in 2020, so we go learn to live with it in 2021 and trying to put things in place and so forth. I remember in the youth department and so on, we said big things planned, a pushy love, all kind of thing had it running, and we said the rest of the year go be nice and sweet with no hiccups. We had all kind of thing planned, and then in the middle of that pandemic. 
So Fred decided, ah, if only only know what is to come. And I remember when Sufre started acting up, chupit me, <laughs> saying, I want to see. <laughs> I said, I want to see what a volcanic eruption looks like. <laughs> I've never seen it in my life. I said, Lord, blow it. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest with you. I said, Lord, blow it up. <laughs> Let me see what the thing looks like. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember it like it was yesterday. The Friday, the Friday morning. I remember it. Friday morning, I ran into town, bought some, you know, the big water because they said, you know, an eruption was imminent. So, you know, I went to Mountain Top, bought the big water them that you use on the fountain and so forth, put it in the vehicle. I had some bad tires on the vehicle. I changed the bad tires down at Kelly Tires in Kittels. And I said, thing nice. While I'm changing the tires early in the morning, I heard the noise. They said, Sufre blow. I said, my goodness, I missed the thing. No. How could I miss the thing still putting tires in tongue and so on? So I said, imagine I miss the excitement, Sister John. I said, me looking at excitement? Even? Little did I know. <laughs> because we never see it. I guess the people who saw it in the 1970s, I mean, would have, would have said to me, don't think of them stupidness there. But I remember when I came out of tongue, vex that, I, that the volcano blew and I wasn't close by. About after two, when I got to Acres, then I heard it blow again. And because I heard the noise from Acres where I was. And I said, Anya, I'm gone. <laughs> she said, gone where? I said, it's Georgetown we're going. I go in. Georgetown I'm going. I'm not missing that. <laughs> I'm going to see it for myself. <laughs> and so she said, well, if you're going and die, we come in too. <laughs> she said, if you want to go and say you want to mash up yourself. Well, it's to all of us go get mash up. So she and Brianna jump in the van and it's fire go Georgetown. Vehicles heading down, we heading up the road. <laughs> and, and the more we see, the more we see vehicle flying down, is the more excited I get in trouble. This is the real thing. I remember when I got to Rabaka, people there, a couple people there, and so on. If you are hearing little things falling on the van and doing video live, <laughs> then went up to Orange Hill, <laughs> right at the foot of the volcano. I said, But this is it. I've been waiting for this all my life. <laughs> this thing, Sister, Sister Batiste. I said, all my life I'm waiting to see a volcano erupt. I'm finally taking advantage of the thing. A gentleman came and told me, you want action? Let me go up Sandy Bay. Take the truck, let me go up Sandy Bay. I said, well, my wife and my daughter are in the vehicle. So I can't leave them stranded. I wouldn't want to. I want to go, but I can't leave them here. If something happened to them, I go blame myself. So I tell him, I want to go, but I cannot go. I remember I was nice, you know. We decided we're going back down. Excitement, but all the videos and the pictures to show for it. Went down in Andersville by my mother-in-law, chilling, relaxing. Well, it enjoyed the Sabbath when it reached. And after seven, when I came out of the house to jump in the van to come back up to Acres, I saw something that I've never seen before. I saw the place white. <laughs> well, in the night, it started looking white. When I looked at the street light, I'm seeing like rain coming <laughs> and no rain. And I'm driving, going up to Acres, and I see all the vehicles them covered. Then I frightened. I said, what did I ask for? <laughs> Lord, forgive my stupidness. <laughs> forgive my, my naivety. <laughs> I mean, I remember, I mean, and when we got into Acres, we had to cover Brianna, wrap up Brianna, rush her into the house and so on. Vehicle covered in ash. And for the next few days, man, we were like prisoners in the house. CWSA had to come and drop water. You have no water. Ash all in your, in your, in your, and just what you do, listening to volcano erupt. And at that point, I realized, boy, this year, terrible boy. And that year, 2021 was something else, you know. Boy, for those of us who didn't live in the red zone, even in the green zone and the yellow zone, we take plenty licks. <laughs> Dust everywhere, ash everywhere. And plus, you have to be careful of corona and COVID and so on. I, 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 I really tell people, but I'm just happy. I said, I didn't want to finish 2021 looking good. I just wanted to see the end and say, Lord, thank you for your blessings. And today I'm happy to be alive. I said, I'm happy to be alive. I said, I'm happy. Are you happy to be alive? <laughs> Man, I tell you, the among the people who died last year, if you made it this year, there are millions of people who did not make it last um, um, into this year. Come on, give God some praise and say, Lord, thank you for your blessings, for your blessings, for your blessings. 
I'm so happy, I'm so happy. I don't want to keep you long, but there's a song that's just in my head. I mean, it's, it's in the hymnal. It's not a praise and worship song. It's a nice song in the hymnal. It's, it's slowly becoming one of my favorite. My favorite song in the hymnal is always song number 92. But this song, but this song here is one I love. And we're going to sing it slow and nice. Um, three, three, four, three, three, four. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy. Never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. I'm just happy to be alive and to have Annie and Brianna in church with me today. I mean, it's a blessing. Certain things we take for granted. Let us give God praise for it. Come thou found. If you know, we're going to sing it slow and nice, slow and nice. And think of it. You know, sometimes we sing songs in church, but we don't look at the words of this song. But I want you to listen to the words and read the words and sing the words and understand what the Bible did. The song is saying, Oh, come the fount of every blessing. Sing, tune my heart to sing that streams of mercy, streams of mercy. Never ceasing. Call for songs. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy. Oh, my second verse is my favorite. Is my favorite verse. Yeah, I raise. Oh, yeah, I raise my Ebenezer. He the by that help up. And I hope, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to us. Jesus sought me, Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposing. Can we take it one step up? Can we take it one step up? Let's take it one step up, one step up. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily am constrained. Let thy goodness sing and let thy goodness like a fetter bind my closer sin. Prone to wonder, oh, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love, but here's my heart to take and seal it, seal it for. We sing in the last verse again. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Here I raise. Second verse, my Ebenezer. He the by thy help, and I hope by thy good pleasure, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to uh, Jesus sought me Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God but he to rescue me from danger interposes last verse now last verse now softly now and oh to grace how Great a debt daily I'm constrained to let thy goodness, Lord, and let thy goodness like a fetter bind me closer. Prone to wonder, singer, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. I'm prone to live the God I love but here's my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy God's above oh somebody say amen Heavenly Father I thank you like the songwriter we can say through many dangers toils and snares I have already come, but his grace 
that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home. Oh Lord, I stand here to preach the very first message on the Sabbath morning for 2022. Oh Lord, give me a word. You have given it to Lord, but allow me to preach it the way you want it to be preached. Take over me, Lord. Possess your servant as I humble myself before you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. I pray that your word would speak to us individually. Your word would be one that would transform lives, would, serve, would key us up and get us ready for this 2022 ahead of us. We do not know what the year holds, but we are grateful that you hold the year in your hands. We are happy that you have already walked into tomorrow while we are still walking in today. And this, because of that, we know our steps are ordered by the Lord. Speak to me now and may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our oh strength and our redeemer, let all God's people say, Amen. And Amen. And it came to pass. Joshua chapter 4, reading from verse 1. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua saying take you twelve men how many men? Out of the people out of every tribe a man and command he them saying take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, 12 stones. How many stones? And he shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where he shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. And take he up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder. Upon what? According unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 6 says, That this may be a sign. A what? Among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean he by these stones? Then he shall answer them. That the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. I've captioned the message for today. I made it. I made it. Come and tell somebody. You don't have to talk in their face. Just bounce them. Tell them I made it. If they're in your home, just tell them I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. If you're if you, if you serious about it, come and tell somebody like you mean it. Tell them I made it. 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 Israel left Egypt after just around 430 years of slavery. They were asked to do something that no other nation was expected to do. They were asked to leave slavery and live as free people without even knowing what freedom felt like. By the time Israel was about to leave Egypt, Every soul alive did not know what it was to enter slavery. They were born into slavery. Are, are you still with me? Slavery was all they knew. Working hard was all they knew. Freedom was nothing they knew what it felt like. It, it is hard to fight for something when you don't know what it is. Hmm. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> so Israel was asked to go to a place called the promised land. A place flowing with milk and honey. Are you still with me? 
a place where God will reveal himself to them and they would worship him. It was a place of redemption. It was a place of sanctification. It was a place where they would see God for themselves and commune with God undisturbed and unhindered. And to do that, God called a little boy who was born at a time when boys were being killed. <laughs> Are you still with me? God has a way of showing off. God could have allowed Moses to be born any other time. But God allowed him to be born when he was trying to be killed. <laughs> Imagine God brought him in the world when a decree was passed to kill all the boys. <laughs> God's timing seemed off. Because how do you let somebody come into the world and from the time they enter, their life is at risk? <laughs> I've come to recognize when God has a plan for your life, sometimes he will allow you to go through some difficult situations. Am, am I still in call? Are you still here? <laughs> I, I said when God is, is getting ready to do something, he will allow you to go through some serious, treacherous circumstances. Moses could not have been born at a worse time, but he could not have been born at a better time. <laughs> because it seems to me the worst of times seem to be the best of times for God. <laughs> I, you didn't get that. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. I will go again. I will go again. I said, the worst of times seem to be the best of times for God. And I've come to recognize if you want to see the hand of God work, you need to see it in the worst of times. <laughs> Because in the worst of times, God still gives his children the best of times. We see his hands working in miraculous ways. Anybody can testify that even in 2021 when things were bad, you still saw the hands of God in your life. Even when you thought you would not have made it, God still came through right on time. Even when you thought that you would have lost your mind, God still kept you in perfect peace. And today, you can, you can stand more resolute knowing that God is on your side. Ah, but watch it now, watch it now. Moses who came and grew up in the temple, here, in, in the palace. I could have preached a whole message about that, but that's not what I'm here to preach about today. Just laying the foundation to where we are going. And the Bible says that, that Moses was no ordinary leader. As a matter of fact, they believe that Moses may have been the greatest leader to walk on the face of the planet. Moses was not articulate, but he was effective. Hey, can I preach? Can I preach? Can I preach? I said he was not articulate, but he was effective. <laughs> when God called Moses, Moses said, God, I couldn't speak. God had to send Aaron to speak for Moses. But Moses was an effective leader. Allow me to say this. You may not be the most gifted speaker, but God can still use you to remove mountains. Anybody still in the call in call with me today? Sometimes we look at flair and, 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 and we look at charisma and we say, this is what the Lord will use. You see Pastor Brent preaching and you say, I can't preach like Pastor Brent, so God can't use me. I've come to recognize if you make yourself available I said if you make yourself available God will use your humility to accomplish things that no pastor, no preacher, no elder can accomplish as long as you humble yourself before the Lord Moses got vexed cursed the people them say Lord is them wicked evil set of people had the whole roller coaster of leadership then God got vexed and God told Moses, it's your people, they're not mine. <laughs> and Moses and God making noise. Because at one point is Moses' people. <laughs> at one point is God's people. <laughs> and Moses is wrestling with God. And God said, Moses, I go mash up everybody. And God, Moses said, Lord, if you go mash them up, mash me up too. Blot out my name from the book of life. If, if you want to mash them up. Because Lord, how am I supposed to explain to the nations around? Is you mash up your people. <laughs> That's the kind of relationship they had. Moses spoke to a rock and... Water came forth, drop bush on bitter water, and bitter water turned sweet. Quail came from heaven, manna came from heaven. Use this rod, stretch over the Red Sea, and the Red Sea parted. That, that demanded great things. But the Bible says, and we saw it, I think, in, 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 in last quarter's lesson, uh, that, that, that Moses made one mistake. He made other mistakes, but fatally made that mistake. That God said to him, Speak to the rock. And Moses in his anger struck the rock. And God could not let that one go. Because for the first time, 
Moses took credit for all the good things that was happening in Israel. And some people said, Lord, why didn't you allow this one to slide? God, he, he did forgive Moses. But he had to, Moses had to pay the price. Because Moses saw the hands of God all through the wilderness. And in his rage and anger, he took credit for what God did. We have to be careful. I said we have to be careful as leaders, as members, that we do not take credit for what God has done. Hey, 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 hey. Can, can I preach? Can I preach? I didn't come to preach about leadership this morning. <laughs> but sometimes when God works in your life, you can be tempted to believe that you are the one. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I said when God uses you to do something mighty, sometimes you can be tempted to take credit and forget that if God removes his spirit in your life, you will become ordinary. And sometimes we can paint the wrong picture and make it believe it's because of our gifts and our abilities and, 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 and our strategies that the work of God is going forward. But I've learned in my young life that if God does not have you, he has somebody else. And if God, are you still with me in the house of the Lord? Because at the end of the day, it is not my work, it is God's work. And before I was there, the church was still moving. Are you still with me in the house of the Lord? And after I leave, the church will still be moving. Are you still with me in the house of the Lord? But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to the point. But the Bible says in the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, and Joshua the son of Nun, so verse chapter 1, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that have I given to you, and I, as I said unto you. He says, no man will be able to stand before you. But verse 6 says, be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide an inheritance, the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. But verse 5 is my favorite. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee. Oh, somebody say amen. Come and talk to me now. Come and talk to me, man. God said to Joshua, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. God said to Joshua, Joshua, Moses is dead. But the plan still remains the same. Are you still with me in the house of the Lord? Moses is no longer there. The chief leader, the one that you look to, that he, you, he, you were his minister, you ministered to him, Joshua. The one that you loved and respected the one that the whole of Israel adored and the one that everybody thought that this is it. Moses is dead. But Joshua, let not your heart be troubled. As you go into an uncertain, as you go to this uncertain time, know this, I am still God. Hello, hello. And because I am still God, the same promises I made to Moses, I'm making the same promises to you. Anybody still with me in Calder? Has anybody still with me in Calder? Let me tell you something. One of the things I've recognized is that as long as the church is, uh, the church is alive, as long as the church is in existence, God will keep on blessing his church. Oh, you don't believe me. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. As long as the church is in existence, God is still fighting for the church. And God said to, Mo, to Joshua, Joshua, don't frighten for anything because I am still with you. But you have an obstacle. The obstacle that you need to face is the Jordan. Before you get out into the promised land, there is a Jordan that you have to cross. Hello? And, 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 and scholars believe, brothers and sisters, that Jordan was, that Israel got to Jordan 
at the time of year that the Jordan was at its heaviest. Uh, are you still with me? No, there are two things you need to learn about the Jordan. Number one, the Jordan was a deep river. Are you still with me? And number two, the Jordan had murky waters. So it was not like the, some of the rivers or most of the rivers that we have in St. Vincent today. It, it was like Guyana. Are you still with me? You know, you know, you know, when you go to Guyana, you don't see the ground. When you go, you just swim and hope that everything is good. <laughs> I said, Brother February and Sister February, what you be silent? I mean, I mean, I remember I was swimming in the Blackwater Creek in Linden and something touched me feet. I walk on water to get back on shore because if it was in clear water, I could have seen. But until I can see, I'm gone. <laughs> And, and that's, what, that's what the Jordan was like. The Jordan was a scary river. You see, because many accidents took place at the Jordan. Because the, 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 next to the Jordan had all the cedars and, and the different trees that they used to cut to make buildings and so on. Because they were close to the river's bank. And many times you had accidents happening at the Jordan. And at that point, Jordan was at its heaviest. Why did God allow Israel after trudging so many years in the wilderness to get to the biggest obstacle when it was at its strongest? Hmm. Anybody still home? Not only that, but Israel was at its weakest because they were still grieving the loss of Moses. Are you still with me? Joshua did not even settle in as leader yet. And they had the Jordan in front of them. Many of us can testify. When we got to 21, we were still trying to recover from certain things in 2020. And anybody can testify? And anybody still home? I'm not talking about the people. If you have it all locked down, you don't need to, the, the, you can just read your Bible and don't listen to the message for today. I'm talking about the, pe the people I'm talking to today are the people who, who you, when you enter 2021, there were still some things you were trying to sort out. Anybody still home? And you enter 2021 not at your strongest. But even when you are not at your strongest, you are greeted by the most ruthless year that maybe you have ever seen. It is one thing to face an obstacle when you are strong. It is a different thing to face an obstacle when you are weak. Are you still with me in the house of the Lord? And it's a different thing to be strong and have your obstacle weak. But it's a bad thing to have weakness and face your obstacle at its full strength. And Israel found themselves with a leader just inducted. Not yet respected. Are you still with me? Hey. Inexperienced. Stay with me Lord. I'm going somewhere with this. I want, you to pay. I want you to see the way I'm going with this. Israel is seeing the promised land at the other side. But they are standing there with a leader who is leading for the first time. Stay with me. A people who did not even know what slavery in Egypt was like. Because when they left, most of them died in the wilderness. So, Brother Colville, them fellas fresh, they have nothing to look back to see the hands of the Lord. The only thing they know is eating quail and manna. Are you still with me? And now, they have a young, fresh, inexperienced leader. And they are faced with the biggest obstacle, the Jordan overflowing its bank, full force. Huh. But God said to Joshua, Joshua, I did not bring you this far. <laughs> hey, I wish somebody could see where I'm going with this. Joshua, I didn't bring you this far to abandon you now. As I was with Moses, I will also be with you. Somebody say amen. And not only that, but the job that I started, 
I will finish it in your life. I wish somebody in color could give God some praise and say, Lord, I'm happy that you never leave a job half done. The plan that you have for my life must come to pass. And even if things are bad, even if things look terrible, even if the vicissitudes of life look so, so insurmountable, God will still make a way where there seems to be no way. I came to let you know, brethren, the hope that we have is that God is still in control. Ah, we may not have all the leaders that we usually have. Church may not be the same since COVID, but we have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We still have an anchor that keeps our soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. We still know that God is in control. And if God be for us, who can be against us today? So watch it now, watch it now, watch it now. The thing gets sweet. So Joshua is at the Jordan. And Joshua does not know what to do. So Joshua decided we have the ark. Hey. I Joshua said we have the ark. So what I want all you to do. Is step back. Hey. Hey. And let the priest them. With the ark. Go inside first. <laughs> No, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. I say, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Joshua said, brethren, me have no idea what God going to do. But he said, we're going to make it. Are you still with me? So the only safe way to make it is to put him in front. <laughs> ah, the ark of the covenant was the presence of God. Are you with me? With Israel. Joshua said, priests, you are up. Are uh, you still with me? Colville, Joshua said, fellas, me never crossed no river like this before. But if it's one thing I know is that God can't drown. Are uh, you still with me? If it's one thing I know is that God can't drown. So fellas, enter the Jordan River and the Bible says when the priests put the Ark of the Covenant on their backs, on their shoulders and they entered into the Jordan as everywhere they placed their feet. The river just start open up. Watch the thing, watch the thing. I said, watch the thing. The river just started opening up. And watch the sweet part about it. The priest then walked in the river. And as they walked, the Jordan parted and held up its banks. No, 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 you're not seeing what I've seen. It is one thing to open a scene. But when a river flowing at maximum velocity, how do you stop the water? <laughs> How do you get dry when water coming down? It's like you have to stop gravity. <laughs> Every other thing, momentum, everything. It says that the presence of God can change any situation. Oh, you didn't hear, you didn't hear, you didn't hear, you didn't hear. I said the presence of God can change any situation. Watch the thing, watch the thing. Everything is going down the Jordan. Everything coming down, everything coming down. Momentum is against Israel. God just entered into the river. Boom, everything changed one time. God stopped the momentum. No matter how bad things are going in your life, when you introduce your life to God, things change. Somebody shout hallelujah in call that today. No matter how bad things are, God changes things. Watch. I don't want to keep you long. I don't want to keep you long. I don't want to keep you long. Because I want to give you a first Sabbath lunch in 2022. Early. But listen to this sweet part. The Bible says when they got into the Jordan, Joshua recognized the only way to keep the water at bay is to keep God in the river. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're not seeing what I see. You're not seeing what I see. Now watch it. The Bible says they were thousands of people and the priest went in first but you will see in the scripture that will come back after that the priest left last <laughs> mm. the priest had to stay in the water why did they have to stay in the water because the presence of God was in the water <laughs> they had the ark and as long as the ark was in the water, there was a way. Hey. 
Oh, I wish you could see what I was saying. I wish you could see what I was seeing. I mean, those of you who didn't get it, let me go back again. I say, as long as the presence of God is in the water, there is a way inside of the water. If you feel like your life has no purpose and, and there is no way to be seen, put God in your situation and God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Many of us can say today, the only reason why we made it into 2022 because God was in the water and because God was in the water I was able to see where I was going hey I thank God that he's still waterproof are you still with me I thank God that he's still the God who works against the laws of science I thank God that he does not leave the water hey he does not leave the water until I get over but let me get to the point. Let me get to the point quick. The Bible says so. And it came to pass, verse 1 of chapter 4. When all the people were clean crossed or clean passed over Jordan. I don't want you to miss this. The book of Joshua said they were not just passed. They were clean passed. No, no, no. No, no. When I, when I, when I researched that, I realized that it was not just by accident. What, what Joshua was saying is that the people did not cross, barely make it. <laughs> Hello. The people made it and they clean pass through, meaning everything that they came to the bank of the rivers with, they crossed with it. Watch it, watch it, now, watch it, now, watch it, now, watch it. Now. No. Clean pass here in, in Joshua chapter 4 meant not just me. But all my possessions crossed with me. When God is getting ready to bless you and get you, he does not just want you. But he wants everything for you to cross. Oh, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. 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 Those, let me set it up again. When God is getting ready for you to cross the Jordan, he does not just want you to cross. But he wants everything for you to cross. So when you leave and you make it on the other side, your dreams are still intact. Your goals are still intact. Your children are still intact. Your finances are still intact. Anybody still with me? Your faith is still intact. God does not just want you to cross the Jordan. He wants you to clean pass the Jordan. I thank God that when I pass, I get a clean pass. Come on, if you believe it, come on, give God some praise for a clean pass. I say, give God some praise for a clean pass now. I say, somebody didn't call to give God a, 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 a praise for a clean pass. Things were not always pretty, but thank God he gave you a clean pass. And when God makes you pass, you will pass. Are you still within the house of the Lord? So watch it, watch it. Watch it, I can't get ahead of myself. The word sweet, it's sweet, it's sweet. God said to Joshua, know that we clean pass and everybody done pass. I need you to do two more things. How many things? <laughs> I want you to take a man from each tribe of Israel. The 12 tribes. So 12 men. Each representing a tribe. And I want you to go back. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I want you to go back in the same place where I just clean past you. <laughs> And I want you to teach man to take a stone. Are you still with me? And not just any stone. A big stone. Because God said, in the, the word says in Joshua, that the men had to put the stones on their shoulders. No, no, no. Stone. Like a boulder. <laughs> if it's a little stone, you hold it in your hand. But the thing is heavy. But he said, I want you Thing sweet to take it at the very place where the feet of the priest them are hello and take it right in that area Woo. and I want you to put them on tell them fellas put it on their shoulder and carry it out of the Jordan with them hello and you may ask Joshua why would I send you back into a river to take a stone. Are you still with me? And to walk out of the river with the stone. 
and carry the stone with you. Lord, don't you think that is reminding us of the bad things that we've been through? God said, no. Let me tell you why I am telling you to take that stone. I want to make sure that long after the Jordan, hey, 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 long after all you've done eating grape and drinking milk and honey, long after things nice and your children living in luxury, that they go see the stone them. I said they go see the stone them. And when they see the stone them, they go ask, Daddy, Mommy, what is the meaning of this stone? And you will tell them, there was a time. Hey. I said, there was a time when our back was against the wall. There was a time when we never thought we would have made it on the other side. There was a time when all hell broke loose in our lives. There was a time when it looked like we would not make it. But God came through right on time. And we made it through the water. And this stone is a reminder that it is not by might. It is not by power. But by the spirit of the living God. Somebody give God some praise in call that today. And say it is not by me. It is not by my abilities. It is not by my strategies. The only reason why my family is alive today is because God made a way where there seemed to be no way. So tell them. Tell them what God did. Tell them what God did. Tell them how God came through. But not done yet. Then God said to Joshua, you need to do one more thing. The, everybody in a tribe took a stone for each tribe. But you, Joshua, go in the Jordan. Are you still with me? If you don't believe me, let me read it. Verse 9. Verse 9. Let me jump to verse 9. <laughs> verse 9. Joshua chapter 4 and verse 9. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of Jordan. Are you still with me? In the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood. And they are there unto this day. Hey, hey, hey. No. <laughs> I love it bad. I love it bad. Lord, help me. Two memorials have to be created. One, are you still with me? One was to remind the children. Hmm. Let me let it soak in because somebody go see where I'm going with this. A memorial is to remind you of something. Are you still with me? And where you put it depends on who you want to see it. Am I talking truth? So the first one, God said to them, we're not keeping the stones here. We live in the river with it. And we're going to Gilgal, as we'll see shortly. And we're pitching it in Gilgal. So that when we're in the promised land, Gilgal is on dry land, we can bring our children there every day and tell them, this is the evidence that God did it for us. But here's the sweet part. Here's the sweet part. Thank you, sister. Here's the sweet part. God said to Joshua, I want to remind the children, but there is something else I want to do. That same 12 stones that they're carrying across, take another 12 and build the same altar inside of the river. Now, if the first one is to remind the children so they walked with it but the second one stayed in the river it is to remind the river All right. All right. oh you, you didn't get it you didn't get it you didn't get it i'm coming back i'm coming back i'm coming back i'm coming back it goes so can you go see it just now the first one is for future generations the one in the river what the Bible said, it stayed up to this day. It is to remind the river. You might say, Pastor, what do you mean the river? <laughs> God will allow you to build a memorial. <laughs> Are you still with me? So that the people who were trying to overflow you will know and be reminded that God did it for you. But that is not the bad, that's not the sweet part. 
I read one Bible commentator who made me go excited when I saw the thing. I'll come in down. I'll come in down for a second. I read from a Bible commentator. And he said, when Israel went into the Jordan, and the ark was in the covenant. Are you still with me? The ark of the covenant was in the river. When Joshua built the covenant or the memorial or the, the altar inside of the river, Jordan was overflowing its banks. Are you still with me? It was the wet weather season. So when the priest left the river, the Bible says the water covered the memorial. But every dry season, during the drought times, are you still with me? And the water level drops. The, oh, you're not seeing it, you're not seeing it, you're not seeing it. Let me go again. I said, he said, in the, when, when things were nice, the water covered the memorial, but when the dry season comes and the time of drought appears, the memorial and the reminder floats or comes to the surface to remind them that even in the dry season, God is still good. Oh, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. I'm so happy that God will give you a reminder, even in your darkest time, that when you see it, you will know that God was the one who take you through it. Let me tell you something. Some of us have been through some Jordan experiences. Hey, can I preach? All of us had our Jordan. Let me see all those who went through our Jordan last year. Ah, oh my goodness. Some of us, the Jordan's still following us into 2022. We're not crossed yet. We're not fully crossed yet. We crossed 2021, but we still have storms fighting and storms that we are trying to get. 2020, well, let me tell you, you go to some Jordans. I tell people every time as I close, I have to tell you. I, I think the biggest, one of the greatest Jordans I've gone through was 2021. I will tell you, I will tell you, let me just give you a quickly. And then I bring in this thing to a close. When the year started, 2021, we hardly rested. Those of, us, those of you who know, like Colville and them who work in the youth department, we entered 2021 full bleed. We, entered, we ended 2020 running. <laughs> and I remember we entered 2021 running. No time to catch ourselves. I remember when we did elections. I remember Jim Ali and the other said, but, 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 but Pastor Brent, like we're not catch ourselves, but we just, we're just running into the new year. We're not even breathe. We're not doing nothing. Pressure. And we entered the year and we said, boy, we're driving, we're driving. Let me just push for one time session. We just, we're driving, we're driving. God, go give us the strength. It was a hard year. And I remember after this and running this and COVID and trying to navigate through this whole thing and so forth. I remember when the volcano erupted. Still tired and so on. When I got the call, I remember it, I was still on my roof. Taking out, um, ash in my spouting. <laughs> Digging out ash in the spouting. I remember we took out almost 600 pounds of ash in the spout in alone. Home in, in Acres. Pressure. When I tired, I called two fellas in Acres. They came and we're taking turns up the ladder. One go up, tired, come down. Another one go up, take turn, come down. I go up, take turn, come down. Whole, for, whole day, just going and going till night. Trying to clear the spout in for the house. Got the call. Brent, we need you to, to come down to the mission and help with this volcanic relief stuff. I said, what do you all need? Well, we have shipments coming in and we need to make sure everything is in place and so on. I got down to the mission office. I said, what we have coming in? When I saw the amount of things to come in, container from there, container from there, container from there, this from there, pallets from there, that pallet. I remember when, when, when Mal and um, Ella, Ella John from Impact said to me, Pastor Brent, boy, this thing not going to be easy. I said, boy, we started clearing place, clear this warehouse, clear this, throw this there, throw that there and preparing for stock. And I remember Ella John can tell you, for four months, four and a half months, is like straight. My wife can tell you. Friday night, Sabbath morning, getting a call saying, you have to come down to take out this thing from customs. I said, are you mad today, Sabbath? Pastor, your donkey fall in a pit. You have to come and take it out. And so on. I remember Sabbath. High Sabbath. High Sabbath. Because we're expecting some bad weather, rain and so on. And they said, all the goods will wet. I down there with the Elgrand, loading up chassis Ben, carrying thing and dropping thing in warehouse, dropping thing in warehouse. Friday, month, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Right through. My wife saw me early in the morning and late in the night. You leave home 7, 8 o'clock, you come back 11, 12 o'clock sometimes. Seven days. I didn't know what Sabbath was. You're in this. Tired like crazy. 
coming down to the end, we see the end of the finish line. I saying to the Lord, I barely making it, but I saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for taking me. At least I go survive this. Because at one point I thought I wouldn't survive. The only good thing about it is I dropped plenty of weight. <laughs> because all of me, all of me in them containers, them heating them containers whole day and whole night. At some point I said, boy, I go dead under this thing. But I thank God that is one of the things I carried from 2021 into 2022. I said at the end of the day, it was pressure. Tired. Just when I thought things couldn't have gotten worse in 2021. They called me, told me, daddy's not doing too well. My father usually have his health challenges and so on. But it, it was, a, it was a, you know, when my parents, well, no, well, any family member of mine, and they can tell when Brianna's sick, I don't sleep. It's a problem I have. When my family not do well, I can't do well. As right? long as, you see, I can deal with no money and all them kind of headache and all the stress for me. You see, when my family member's sick, yeah, yeah them things don't, they don't sit with me well at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. I mean, so I remember started taking that thing on and what daddy needed and so on. And when I'm recovering, I remember the folks in the warehouse telling me, Brent, what happened to you? I said, girl, they call me and they tell me my father not doing well and, you know, I, I worried about this thing. Just when I think I'm getting over it, I got a call in the morning about after nine saying, mommy's in the hospital in intensive care with a heart attack. I said, I said, you, really? <laughs> I said, nah. This can't be real. I remember sitting in the warehouse and saying, Lord, you know me running this relief operation there, logistics. You know I'm tired physically and mentally. You don't have daddy sick already. You go and give mommy a heart attack. No of all times. Pressure. I said to the Lord, Lord, you go kill me this year. While I'm trying to catch myself, I got a call at 11 o'clock in the morning or 10, 11 o'clock in the morning saying, one of my aunts died. I said, really? I said, Lord, what else you want to do? Then, 12, then 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I got another call. My other hand died. <laughs> Same day, two of them gone. Pew. And I said to the Lord, Lord, really? <laughs> and I said to the, I, I, I reached to the point that you're physically tired, you're mentally tired, you can't go home because they have COVID protocols. You're not vaccinated. Are you still with me? <laughs> and you tell yourself, you go home, you can't even see your mother because you have to spend 14 days in quarantine in, in a hotel. And after the 14 days in quarantine, everything's safe. And just when I thought I'd go in and take a breather, catch myself, I'm going to Guyana. I went to do an exit screen. I got a call from Ministry of Health. You're positive for COVID. I said, really now? <laughs> I said to the Lord, what else you go do in 2021? Just mash me up. I said, just mash me up and down. I said, Lord, really? And I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't even want to look good coming out of 2021. I just want to make it. Are you still with me? And let me tell you something. I went through, boy, I tell people, 2021, I got the closest to just giving up. And say, boy, I'm done with this. I don't tell my wife already, girl, I don't think I'm going back in this thing. I say, boy, better just leave this past the thing and go and buy a truck and go and carry rubber and sand for people and so on and preach as a sidewalk. <laughs> are you still in? I mean, I tell, I, I'm, I'm telling you, these are the kind of things that ran through my head last year. I said to the Lord, because I can't understand how the Lord would have me working so hard this year of all times and then going through the most hell at this time. I said, when I wasn't giving so much, I wasn't taking all them licks there. It's now the Lord decide they go mash up Brent and done. But I, 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 I realize that when you get to your extreme and you have no more left, God carries you across. I, 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 are, you still, are you still with me? I, 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 I thank God today. I thank God today. I tell, I tell people every time, when I, when I look back at 2021, I'm not counting the successes and what happened. I just thank God that I was able to step into 2022 and I can still think straight. I still have a wife and a daughter. I still have a mother and a father. Are you still with me? I can still say, Lord, I went through it all, but I made it. And I tell people, I don't know what 2022 has because you know, still have the dark clouds. <laughs> But at the end of the day, you know that the God who began the work is able to complete it. And let me tell you, I want to say this to some of us who are here. Sometimes you see people and you don't know what they're going through. Are you still with me? We don't know, you know. We see people laughing and preaching. All the time are preaching full blade. Coming out for relief effort on Friday night and gunning up to acres to reach up. To sometimes just put a jacket and a short pants and preach for international program on Zoom and so on and preach and sweat. And when you don't sweat and sweat, you have to bathe and just put your head down and stress. And everybody, good message, pastor, man. God is good. The Lord using you mightily. And they don't know that in your heart you're fighting with God. 
But you, you can't tell people that. <laughs> you think Pastor Brent can go and say, boy, um, brethren, I feel like I go give up. <laughs> I mean, people go say, it's the devil. <laughs> The devil take over you. <laughs> and so on and so on. So you have to take your, you have to go through your suffering in private. There are some of us who can't tell people what we're going through. Because if we tell them, they're going to lose faith. <laughs> so we have to just be there for them. Are you still with me? Even in the middle of our storm, we have to still act like nothing happened. And, and hope that we don't crack or break under the pressure. Because if we crack and break, others go crack and break too. So you have, you, you act like you have it all together. And you tell yourself, boy, you're just pushing through. I remember the days I would be in the warehouse, pushing, 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 finish a container in the middle of the whole stress and so on. Then go in the back room in the, in, in, in the warehouse and just lie down there and just say, Lord, boy, you go kill me today. And people don't know. And I listen to them saying, Pastor Batista and everybody, you know, well done, logistics team. We have a hardworking, dedicated team who, who the physically and mentally strong. And they don't know you right there. <laughs> you right there. Are you, are you still You right to the point that you're about to break. But God said he will keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed upon him. And today I want to testify and say, Lord, I thank you for allowing me to make it. <laughs> I mean, if you want to say thank you, Lord, for making it. Thank you, Lord, for making it. If you want to say, Lord, I want to thank you for allowing me to make it. Just wave your hands. Wave your hands. Wave your hands. Wave your hands, man. I, I, I don't believe. Put the hands down. Put the hands down. I want you to be. I want you to be more excited than this man. If you're excited and you say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to make it. Just wave your hands them high. Wave your hands them high. Wave your hands them high. I tell you. 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 There is a song. There is a song. There is a song. Chanel, I don't want to put you on the spot, you know, Chanel. I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't know if, if brother Nolly knows this song, but if they can give a mic to Chanel, there is a song. I've been battered, bruised, and torn, but I'm still here. There were times I thought I wouldn't make it, but I'm still here. I'm still here to praise your name. I'm still here. You took the blame. Chanel, join them. If you praise him, if you know it, join Sister Chanel and sing. Let us stand together. Let us stand together. If you are thankful for making it, just stand where you are. Stand where you are. Stand where you are. Stand where you are. I'm still here to praise your name. I'm still here. I made it. 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 I made it, I made it. Chanel, sorry for putting you on the spot just like that in 2022. But as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just love this song. I just, I just came to me today. I just want to thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Sing, you can put your own words to you know, Chanel. We know you're good at them things. Yes. There were days I thought I would have dead. I've been battered, bruised, and torn. Oh, sing it. But I am still here. Some days my life was filled with faith. Oh, but I'm still here. So many.
Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. You thought there are days when you would not make it, but you are still here. Amen. You understand? You thought your back was against the wall and there was nowhere to turn, but you are still here. Amen. And as long as we are here, there is hope, there is life, there is a second chance, there is a chance to bounce back. We are still here. Oh, to somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody, all our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, we can say we made it. We may be bruised, but we made it. We may still be hurting, but we made it. We went through hell, but we, still, but we made it, Lord. We say thank you for allowing us to make it. We don't have it made, but we make it. We made it. And for this we say to God be the glory. Great things you've done. And Lord like Israel. Help us to never forget. Where you took us from. Help us to keep the stones. Of the. Of the memory of. The days when we crossed our Jordans. So when they ask us. Brent how did you make it? Anya, how did you make it? Colville, how did you make it? Marcia, how did you make it? Laurel, how did you make it? Dave, how you made it? Top, how did you make it? Rodney, how did you make it? Archibald, how did you make it? Marlon, all the others, how did you make it? You can say our backs were against the wall. But the Lord made a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you for making a way, Lord. And as we face 2022, we say, Lord, have thine own way. Have thine own way. Though at the porter, we are the clay. Mold us and make us after thy will. Lord, thank you for your strength. Thank you for allowing me to make it, Lord. I can say, Lord, I never thought I would have. But Lord, I thank you for another chance to fight on. Continue to bless us, bless our families. Help us to be committed to the Lord. We don't know what Omicron has in store. But we know that you hold tomorrow in your hands. Amen. Bless us, Lord. Our children are going back to school full blade from Monday. Oh, Lord, it's a very uncertain time. But, Lord, we put our uncertain situation into the hands of a certain God. Amen. Bless us, Lord. Use us mightily. Forgive us where we have failed you and grant us a brand new, fresh experience in 2022. And when time shall be no more, save us in your eternal kingdom, we beg. In the mighty name of Jesus, let all God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We just want to thank Pastor for such an inspirational message. We have all made it. And I want to encourage you to help others to make it to the kingdom also in 2022. God bless. Have a blessed Sabbath, everyone.